Hey guys, this is Dave from Unlock Disney, and we'll have a video coming out in a day or so. You know, just I like to keep them at least once a week. But this is something that I thought was kind of fun, especially for us Disney nerds out there. I am very much a Disney nerd. Dug deep, and I found the grand opening from 1971. So it's the TV special from Disney World. And then I followed that up with um, a grand opening parade and different pictures from back then and then a special that Disney Parks had put out. So enjoy. Again, it's 1971, so it is pretty dated, but that makes it even more awesome. All right, guys, the grand opening TV special. Now, a special program in living color on NBC. the opening of the Walt Disney World in Florida, just a few miles away from Cape Kennedy where men point their space vehicles toward the stars, Walt Disney decided to launch his final dream. A commitment to the future for your children and mine. This is a world of lakes and waterways, of incredible new rides and illusions, wildlife sanctuaries for nature's creatures, as well as camping grounds and golf courses and all manner of wonderful things for the human species. Best of all, it is a place to stir the imagination and instill a sense of hope for tomorrow. A joyful land built by an inspired dreamer for other dreamers and dreams still to come. The time, now. Occasion, the opening of Walt Disney World. The place, Orlando, Florida. The grand opening of Walt Disney World. Starring Julie Andrews. Special guest star, Glenn Campbell. Also starring Buddy Hackett. Jonathan Winters. In special tribute to Walt Disney, Bob Hope. The grand opening of Walt Disney World is presented tonight by Eastern Airlines. Eastern and its 7,000 travel agents, the people to call for travel to Walt Disney World. And GAF, the official film of Disneyland and Walt Disney World. And by the people of U.S. Steel. In countless ways that contribute to a better life, we're involved. In the 90 seconds it'll take you to watch this commercial, United States Steel can do a remarkable number of things. So many things, we can't possibly show them all. But here are a few. In 90 seconds of every working day, we can make almost a third of a mile of three-quarter inch pipe. We can mine 125 tons of coal. Here's 90 seconds worth of cyclone fence. We make that too. Did you know U.S. Steel is a cement company? In 90 seconds, we can produce 300 bags. In that same 90 seconds, we can make enough steel siding to cover a house and 400 feet of wire rope and 60,000 pounds of fertilizer, 225 plastic pails, three football helmets, 300 plastic tumblers, one plastic chicken coop, not to mention enough tin plate for 8,000 beverage cans and enough sheet steel for 18 automobiles. That's only the beginning because we also build bridges and buildings all over the world. Of course, not in 90 seconds. Yes, U.S. Steel makes all this and more, much more, in literally hundreds of ways. We help you live a better life. At United States Steel, we're involved. I could have included 75,000 nails and 100 feet of railroad rail and five building, building panels.
Magic Kingdom. Do you know the way? Please, sir! Do you know the way to the Magic Kingdom? <laughs> do you know the way to the Magic Kingdom? Sure I do. But can you fly? You can fly to a Magic Kingdom that's right outside your hotel window. To Walt Disney World in Florida. On Easter, the airline of Walt Disney World. The airline that believes dreams really can come true. The wings of man. Well, Margaret, here we are at Disney World Campgrounds. Yay! All right, you little beggars. Here, you get out, all right? Get over there to the campsite. Hurry up now. Come on, Mavis, Teddy, Sissy. June, you get over there. Harry, Tony, run over in that area. Just, just move around at will. That's all right. Pick up some sticks and some firewood. Well, Margaret... <laughs> Made it to the campgrounds. That wasn't too bad a drive, was it? After all, it was only two days and two nights from Fort Smith. I didn't bug you too much, did it? Margaret, well, what about me sitting on this side all the time going bumpity 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 bump? Wasn't easy for me. I guess you must have hit a thousand chuckles between Fort Smith and here. Oh, come on, Margaret. Huh? Listen, let me tell you something. We didn't do this vacation for me or the kids. We did this for you, Margaret. So you could get out of that hot, sweaty kitchen and have the fun of your life right here in Disney World. Huh? I'm going to get out now, Margaret, and come around and get you. What is it with you? Why, you seem to be out on your feet. I can't believe this. You're not going to tell me that you're tired, that you can't hack it. Come on, Margaret. Get out of there. Let's, let's get out and carry some water and maybe... Here, wait a minute. Let me, let me help you. Are your hands frozen to the wheel? Here. <coughs> Why, they're like claws. That'll be great for carrying water, Margaret. Here, let's get the other one. <coughs> All right, come on, on your feet. We're gonna have some fun. Chop some firewood. Maybe find some wildlife over here, take some pictures. The kids are... What are you doing, Margaret? What is this kind of a walk? Huh? Well, you're some kind of female Frankenstein. You're gonna scare the kids if you do this. Put your hands down. Stop that. <coughs> well, you look like Smokey the Bear after he'd been struck by lightning. Get over here. Sit down here, Margaret. Why, I just can't... Margaret, I can't believe this. Here, you kids. Mavis, Billy Joe, come over here. Mavis and Billy... Jean, Jean, come over here. Never mind, Billy, you stay back there. Get, get a hold of the tent over there. Here, you kids. You grab her here by the wrists. Start moving them like that. Here, honey. Down around the ankles. You're dogging it, Margaret. You're dogging it. Huh? Uh, 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 what are you trying to tell me, Margaret? Ah. Uh, Ah, oh, you see, you talked too much in the earlier years when we were first married. Now you've lost your voice. Ah, 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 ah. Oh. oh, too bad. All right, you kids run off now. Go off there. And go off in there into the, into the wilds. There's a lot of things to see. Come on, Margaret. We're going to have some fun, sweetheart. On your feet now. Come on, this is your holiday. And I'm on the lake side of the new Contemporary Hotel. You'll see it in a minute. Now, what I'm trying to do here is kind of clear my head after seeing some of the things that you'll glimpse on the show today. Now, we all know magic is the Disney people's special business. 
So I was halfway ready for them to wave a magic wand and see swamps drain away and to watch lakes and lagoons appear and rivers begin to flow. I expected, I expected to see miracles take place in all sizes, small, medium, large, and family size, of course. But when I found out that Walt Disney World is twice as big as the island of Manhattan, I just had to stop and think about that a minute. Now here's something you don't see as you enter your average hotel. Which brings us to something else. Now they say the old Spanish explorers used to look for the fountain of youth around these parts. Now I'd say they were a little bit too early. If you're looking for the spirit of eternal youth, here he is right now. My golfing buddy, Mr. Bob Hope. How do you do? How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Bob X Mouseketeer Hope. <laughs> Boy, they, they don't build mice the way they used to, do they? <laughs> Thank you, girls. Wait for me in Adventureland. <laughs> how about this? Isn't this a beautiful place? And how about that mural? Look at that mural. When John Wayne doodles, he doodled. <laughs> hey, what a building. Now I know where the Goodyear blimp goes during the mating season. <laughs> now this place is so big, by the time you cross the lobby, your luggage stickers have faded. <laughs> you saw this beautifully engineered modern hotel from the outside. It has a very unusual shape. Matter of fact, a nearsighted flamingo has been sitting on the tower for weeks trying to hatch it. <laughs> it's really... It's really two buildings leaning against each other. And I want to congratulate the architect, Dean Martin. <laughs> now, the rooms are fabulous. They even have weather control, which is wonderful for guests from Los Angeles. They can have smog anytime they want it. It's really different. It's really different. A lot of hotels put a Bible in your room, but here Billy Graham comes up and reads it to you. I have a lovely room with complete privacy, except in the bathtub, which Donald Duck shares with me. Did you ever try bathing with a duck who was playing with his rubber man? I ordered lunch from room service. Snow White brought it in, and I was afraid to eat the apple. I don't dare drink the water because that was delivered by Pluto. All the... I'm sorry, I can't wait. My monorail will be here any minute. But this is the biggest vacation complex entertainment in the world. And to think it all started with a gentle mouse, a bad-tempered duck, and seven mixed-up dwarfs. I must say, it's a fantastic achievement. They took a swamp and turned it into a magic kingdom. It wasn't easy. Have you ever tried to relocate 8,000 angry alligators? <laughs> and there's so much to see here. I love Fantasyland. Fantasyland, you know, that's like Agnew winning the National Open. Then I went to Tomorrowland, which shows how it'll be a hundred years from now. There's a whole section devoted to the Paris peace talks. <laughs> About the only way I can describe Disney World is to give it the highest compliment that you can give to anything man-made. Ralph Nader would like it. <laughs> and now I'd like you to stick around for a while and see what's been done and what's going to be done. You know, Walt Disney always believed in the beauty and natural wonders of the world. But he felt as we pass through, we should try to add a little wonder and beauty to it. Maybe you'll understand that Walt's dream was just a beginning. 
the dream doesn't stop here. This is the start of it. I think you might want to tell your grandchildren you were there when it happened. a great shot. Get that. Look. What have you got? The GAF Super 8? Yeah. Wonderful. Is it loaded? Yeah. Now, you got to be very quiet because they're very temperamental. One of them's sensitive about his ears. The other's very touchy about his side. Now, just aim it and start shooting. Don't worry about the exposure. There's an electric eye in there. It takes care of all that. GAF Super 8's got a zoom lens. You know how to use it? Uh-huh. Okay, now zoom into close-up. Sweetheart, look at Daddy! Everybody, what's so great about this gift pack for Christmas? Because the GAF Talking Viewmaster is so educational. Watch. How deep's the Grand Canyon? The Grand Canyon is over a mile deep. Yay! Yay. Tell them more. The GAF Talking Viewmaster is fun. Tell them the best part. It'll keep your kids quiet for hours. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs>
this morning Something inside of me Told me this would be my day I heard the morning train I felt the wind change Too many times I'm on my way Come on sunshine What can you show me? Where can you take me To make me understand? The wind can shake me Brothers forsake me The rain can touch me But can I touch the rain? Then I saw the sunrise Above a cotton sky Like a candy cane delight I saw the milkman I saw the businessman I saw the only road in sight And then I got to thinking What makes you want to go To know the wherefore and the why So many times now Oh Lord, I can't remember If it's September or July Come on sunshine What can you show me? Where can you take me To make me understand? The wind can shake me Brothers forsake me The rain can touch me But can I touch the rain? saw the wherefore and you can see it if you try it's in the sun above it's in the ones you love you'll never know the reason why come on sunshine what can you show me where can you take me to make me understand the wind can shake me brothers forsake me the rain can touch me but can i touch the rain so much to lose, so much to gain Whee. You know, every now and then, I think we get the idea that freedom is our right, so we can shape it to our own personal convenience. But I don't think it's meant to be that way at all. You see, freedom isn't a divisible thing that you can cut up and keep the lion's share for yourself with others getting what's left over. This here is Liberty Square. It's the heart of Disney World. And I'll tell you, it's a great place just to think and feel. There are other things here to remind us too that freedom didn't come to us on a silver platter. All around us here are the streets of colonial America. Shops, meeting houses, taverns, farms, and the forges. It's where our liberties were born. This here is the Hall of Presidents. So come on in and meet the special and remarkable group of men who brought us along the journey of our nation's life from the very beginning. It's a great place. Let us pay homage to the immortal men whose illustrious names have been indelibly inscribed on history's roll of honor. George Washington, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, James Monroe, John Quincy Adams, Andrew Jackson, Martin Van Buren, William Henry Harrison, John Tyler, James K. Polk, Zachary Taylor, Millard Fillmore, Franklin Pierce, James Buchanan, Abraham Lincoln, Andrew Johnson, Ulysses S. Grant, Rutherford B. Hayes, James A. Garfield, Chester A. Arthur, Grover Cleveland, 
Benjamin Harrison, William McKinley, Theodore Roosevelt, William Howard Taft, Woodrow Wilson, Warren G. Harding, Calvin Coolidge, Herbert Hoover, Franklin D. Roosevelt, Harry S. Truman, Dwight D. Eisenhower, John F. Kennedy, Lyndon B. Johnson, Richard M. Nixon. This government must be preserved in spite of the acts of any man or set of men. Nowhere in the world is presented a government of so much liberty and equality. To the humblest and poorest among us are held the highest privileges and positions. What constitutes the bulwark of our liberty and independence? It is not the frowning battlements or bristling sea coast, our army and navy. These are not our reliance against tyranny. Our reliance is in the love of liberty, which God has planted in us. Our defense is in the spirit which prizes liberty as the heritage of all men, in all lands everywhere. Destroy this spirit, and you have planted the seeds of despotism at your own doors. At what point shall we expect the approach of danger? By what means shall we fortify against it? Shall we expect some transatlantic giant to step the ocean and crush us at a blow? Never. All the armies of Europe, Asia, and Africa combined could not by force take a drink from the Ohio or make a track on the Blue Ridge. At what point, then, is the approach of danger to be expected? I answer, if it ever reach us, it must spring up among us. It cannot come from abroad. If destruction be our lot, we ourselves must be its author and its finisher. As a nation of free men, we must live through all time or die by suicide. Surely God would not have created such a being as man with ability to grasp the infinite, to exist only for a day. No. No. Man was made for immortality. You've done a fantastic job here. This canvas is perfect. It's very taut. I see the the legs here are in tight in the ground and then all the pegs. Why, that's just great, Margaret. I'm very proud of you. And I love this campsite. It's just fantastic. Margaret, come on. Get a hold of yourself. Here, let's let's get up. You've got to straighten up here a little bit. 
Well, you're all bent over, Margaret. Here, straighten up. Isn't it strange, you know, after all these years that we've been married, you get much taller than I do. You get taller and taller, and I, I get shorter and shorter. I don't suppose you've been fooling around with those voodoo dolls again, have you? Huh? Tell me the truth now, Margaret. Here, let's move right over here. You sit right here, and we'll gather the kids around, right here by the fire. That's good, Margaret. Right down there. Take your time, my dear. Here we go. All right, kids, everybody, come on. Let's gather around here. It's time once again for our family powwow. Daddy gets his feather here. All right, you get situated around Mommy there. Yes, sir, and I'll put my feather in. There we go. Ah, ah, gang. All right. Say, Willie, what do you got there? Let me take a look at those. Uh-oh, those aren't robin's eggs. No, sir, those are Mommy alligator eggs. That's what they are. You better be careful and put those back right away, or Mommy alligator will get after you and go, <laughs> and you'll be gone just like that. Ah, that gnat. What was that gnat? What's the matter, Mavis? Did you think that was Tinkerbell? Why, well, I'd know Tinkerbell if I saw her. That little funny gnat. <laughs> it is Tinkerbell. Gee, I almost crippled her. Take a look at her wings. One of them's bent. Here, I'll straighten that out. You see that? What I'll do is just work those wings back and forth. Maybe give her a little mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Ever do that to a gnat? It's not easy. <laughs> there she goes. Isn't that fantastic? Good luck to you, Tinkerbell. <laughs> Mother, that gives me an idea. Margaret, pull yourself together. The kids are staring at you. Listen, how about a little game? Remember that fantastic game where I play William Tell and, and you stand there maybe about 50 or 75 yards away with an apple on your head? Huh? Remember that, Margaret? Remember that, kids? And I forgot to put the rubber tip on last time. And Mom, right in the head. She had some kind of headache, didn't she? Where is Mommy? Hey, kids, come on. Let's go get Mommy. Here, remember? All right, everybody in unison. We're gonna track down Mommy, everybody. We're gonna track down Mommy. <laughs> yes. In the islands, there seem to be many occasions for joy. One of them is the luau. On the beach in front of the Polynesian village in Disney World, there's one taking place right now. Started to fly and to run. Oh, you 
only touched on the thrills and the fun. You think it's over? Well, it's just begun. There's no need to holler. I'm poor, I'm poor. There's more. There's more. Much more. Lots more. More pure enchantment and more sheer delight. More joys to last through the day to the night. Lots you can learn Bigger adventures And we are willing now to bet You just ain't seen nothing yet Well, so as you wander through this wonderland You'll find the wonders you never had planned You think you had it, you don't understand There's no need to toss out your arms There's more More pure enchantment. More, more. Pleasant jokes to last through the night time. More, more. Lots to learn from things that enlighten. More, more. You will get your money's worth. It's the biggest show on earth. You mustn't stop now, there's magic ahead. Don't cash your chips and keep winning instead. Life is a kumquat, what? like somebody said. So don't be around. This GAFU match is a lot of fun. What do you think? Extremely interesting. The three-dimensional color pictures are extraordinary. I find these how to play football wheels very instructional. I always considered the GAFU master an ingenious invention of great educational value. Gee, I always thought it was just a lot of fun. We will return to the grand opening of Walt Disney World following station identification. Now we are back in Disney World, and to prove it, here's the Mickey Mouse Review.
again, everybody. This is your track announcer, Chick Hearn. And ladies and gentlemen, the most spine-tingling event of this or any other sports season. You will see four of the world's top racing drivers using the most modern racing equipment, putting their skill and brains and raw courage on the line, battling one another in a scorching drive to the checkered flag. Introducing Mr. Mark Donahue, twice winner of the U.S. Road Racing Championship. Three-time winner of the Trans-American Sedan Series. Mr. Bobby Unser, one of the famous Unser racing family and recent winner of the Indianapolis 500. And Mr. Jackie Stewart, current world driving champion. And Mr. Leonard Hackett. Gentlemen, start your engines. I'll get the blue job with the round wheels. <laughs> All right, you guys, you ask for it. supposed to be a fork in the road. When you and your family visit Walt Disney World, come, stay with us. Yes, United States Steel owns a spectacular hotel. It's one of two we helped plan and build here. But this is more than a hotel. It's a prototype of a whole new way to build. And we're involved. Everything about it is striking. But most unusual is the way the rooms were made. Instead of being built in place, the rooms were assembled in a nearby factory by our American Bridge Division. 
First came a steel frame, then a floor of poured concrete. Wall panels from our USS Holmes Division. Next, the ceiling with air conditioning built right in. Then wall covering, a complete bath, even sliding doors. When the units leave the factory, they're trucked to the site and fitted into this 14-story frame like drawers into a chest. We're confident that schools, hospitals, and other structures will soon be built this revolutionary way. We not only supplied the structural steel, the cement and the foundations came from our Universal Atlas Cement Division. So come, stay with us at this unique hotel, a remarkable place inside and out. We're finding new ways to build. At United States Steel, we're involved. Hey, y'all. I'm Carl Cracker from Weevil Seat, Georgia. I'm sort of a tracker, you might say. These are my two dogs here, Jesse and Kudja, just playing around there in the sand. <laughs> They're good hound dogs, I tell you. You know, a little while back here, about 15 or 20 minutes ago, there was a, like a crazy man went through here. He must have had six to eight kids. It looked at least that many. He come up upon me and uh, Kudja and Jesse and he said, uh, you a tracker? And I said, you lose them, we get them. <laughs> That's a little, little tracker funny that I always throw in when we, well, shoot. At any rate, uh, he, said, uh, he said, I've lost the missus. I lost my wife. Could you help me out? He said, what about them two dogs? He said, the one dog. And I said, which one? Now, make sure you, and he pointed over to Jesse. And Jesse kind of looked up at him, rolled his eyes around and everything. He said, that dog's coat's kind of mangy, ain't it? And I said, it is kind of mangy. I said, that's his second coat. His first coat was a good one. But his second coat has borrowed from the VA. The other dog is just, well, he, 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 he put his nose there in, a, in some kind of bobcat trap. And uh, somebody asked me the other day, they said, how does it smell? <laughs> And I said, terrible. <laughs> That's a little swamp joke. <laughs> oh, shoot. I don't believe these uh, two dogs could ever find that woman. I, I'm not kidding. Of course, Jesse here now, uh, well, about six, eight years ago, there was a hurricane down here, and he lost all his teeth. And uh, prior to that, why, one day he was just sitting there. His, he only had about six, eight good ones, good teeth, that is. And he commenced to kind of howl through his teeth like, and he was howling the... The Battle Hymn of the Republic. <laughs> he didn't go over too good down here. Folks thought he was a blue belly. They booed him. He put his tail between his legs and he cut on out like that. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing like that. But I just, I had a log fall on me here Sunday week and I haven't been right since. Well, at any rate, uh, like I say, these two dogs, uh, they, they used to track folks, you know, but here lately they've gotten so old and one of them's kind of tetch. He just runs around in circles. That's Kudgy. He just goes around like this. <laughs> you know, that's not right for anybody to do it, let alone a dog. Well, you all take care of here. As far as catching that woman, I, these two dogs, they couldn't do it. I'll tell you why, because they got sinus conditions, both of them. I have two. So by three of us, I guess you might as well say we're out of it. <laughs> you all take care of here. If you see that guy, why, tell him I said hello. I sure do hope he catches the messes. It's kind of fun catching the missus, isn't it? Yeah, once in a while. <laughs> Y'all take care. Come on, Cudge and Jesse. Come on, boy. Come on, boys. What's that? Good night. Why, there's cowboys. Look around at the sky and the ground. Every leaf, every tree. be found, shining and new, waiting for you. Everywhere I look, I see a world full of love. Everywhere I turn, I see a world full of love. Simple things become what a simply super feeling Every time I take a look at love When I smile at a friend There's 
a face full of love Hold a child in my arms There's an arm full of love When you're willing to care You'll find joy everywhere In this wonderful world full of love Take a friend by the hand To help celebrate this great opening, GAF, the official film of Disney World, has come up with a Disney gift set. You get a GAF 236XF electric eye instant load camera with case, three flash cubes, GAF color print film, plus a Mickey Mouse jewelry pin, and a souvenir brochure of Disney World. A whole world of Disney. Right in this box from GAF. Do you know the way to the Magic Kingdom? I'll never get there. Never get there. Do you know the way to the Magic Kingdom? Sure I do. But can you fly? You can fly to Walt Disney World in Florida. On Eastern, the airline of Walt Disney World. The wings of man. You know, this fantastic scene is a tribute to the vision, imagination, and genius of Walt Disney. Walt Disney World is the culmination of a lifetime devoted to bringing joy and excitement and laughter to children and adults in America and throughout the world. You gotta see this place. It's Dream City. New York, Paris, London, that's where the action is, but this is where the fun is. This is the place to relive your youth. You just walk in and you get 30 years off for good behavior. There's a spirit here, everywhere. It's in the air, everywhere you look. All this is Walt. This is what Walt wanted for all of us. 
and escape from our aspirin existence into a land of sparkle and lights and rainbows. Today, his name is more than just a household word for laughter, fun, and joy. It's a signal to the minds of the children of all ages. Cheer up. All is not lost. Entertainment is on the way. There's another message that Walt Disney communicated, and if you look around you here in this splendid monument to the man, you'll sense it as I did. Walt Disney loved America. He loved its traditions. He loved its children and their moms and pops. And he must have loved the parents to treat them to so many restful hours while their kids were camped at the local movie house. Walt Disney loved the American way of life. He loved it so much that he recreated many of this nation's most joyful periods. Frontierland, Main Street, USA, way down yonder in New Orleans. Talking presidents that you can hear and enjoy here in Disney World today. Walt Disney loved America because his dream came true right here in America. He brought to us the delightful images of a kind of kaleidoscope of sound, motion, color, music, and beauty, and he tied it all up into one broad, beautiful, bountiful package called love. Maybe that's what we ought to rename this place, from Disney with love. The entire world owes Walt Disney a great debt. He achieved much. But perhaps his greatest accomplishment is that he made children of us all. States Army Band now salute the grand entry of the Walt Disney World 1,076-piece ceremonial marching band under the direction of music man Meredith Wilson.
When you get someone the GAF talking view master, you're giving something very clever. Watch. But this is smarter than you are. Impossible. When was the capital of the United States built? 1793, right? United States capital in Washington, D.C. First built in 1793. Hmm. Where's the Grand Canyon? Arizona, right? I thought the GAF talking view master was smarter than anybody. He doesn't know. I just got one for my birthday. Presented tonight by GAF, the official film of Disneyland and Walt Disney World. By the people of United States Steel, in countless ways that contribute to a better life, we're involved. Our thanks to Glenn Campbell, star of The Glenn Campbell Show. Hi, I'm Forrest, 42-year cast member, and I'm going to take you back with some great memories of the opening of the Magic Kingdom in 1971. October 25th was the grand dedication opening of the Magic Kingdom. Just imagine 4,000 people all entertaining everyone. We'd been preparing for this for more than a year. You can't imagine on the street. 24 Herald Trumpets starting uh, all over Town Square. They were on the rooftops playing. The Main Street opening spectacular parade included everything representing the Magic Kingdom. We had units for every single land. Uh, example from Adventureland, we had a Calypso wagon with a steel drum band. Probably a hundred Disney characters interspersed. When it began, it began with a giant drum with Mickey Mouse on the top ended up with Meredith Wilson in a gazebo float and a 1,076-piece marching band. And as you look down Main Street, we just start and more and more and more and more. And we were, uh, the one conductor was up on one of the rooftops up here, and they were doing this just to keep everybody in time. So it was unbelievable. And then we got everybody lined up around the hub. There were herald trumpeters, there was a concert choir, a symphonic orchestra. It was absolutely unbelievable entertainment. When that was done, there was a balloon release of 50,000 balloons. You would be amazed. I mean, it was just uh, absolutely too much. I think what really happened is this grand dedication opening Main Street Parade was above and beyond any, anything anybody could imagine. And that's our purpose to always make it a better guest experience, new, bigger, better, but never forgetting the traditions of Walt Disney.